I'm feeling like garbage today. I'm gonna try to speak up because otherwise what's the point of doing this video, but my head is just, it's just been throbbing. It's for, I, think, I think it's all day yesterday is this. All, it started the day before and I tried to, I tried to sleep overnight and uh, and then all day and then last night it just kept going and uh, and it's still going today it's no better in there I think it's actually worse in there because the roof is metal and it just it vibrates every hit it just vibrates uh, yeah, I, I took some um, I've got some uh, paper towel stuff I was using for my my feet I still got some more of that like napkins and things I, I got it in my ears but it's just you can feel it all over your body And, uh, and my foot, the one I stepped on the nail with, uh, it started tingling yesterday. Uh, like the skin is sensitive around it. It's kind of red. And uh, the, the skin around it, like my foot, is starting to tingle a little bit. And that's not, a, that's not an awesome sign. So today, I'm not doing that great. I mean, the last time I did a video, I remember I was doing great. I mean, you can have all the shelter and the food in the world, but oh, I just can't sleep. And now I think I got an infection in my foot. And I just don't like, you know, I can't work. You know, I've... There's stuff I, 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 I should be doing right now, but I can't, I can't function. My head is just throbbing to the point where I'm feeling nauseous. And I'm try, trying not to walk on the foot. I don't know, maybe it would be good if I walked around and get the blood circulating. I, I don't know, but I don't feel like I can be functional right now. I think the last time that I did anything that was... You know, the last task where I actually accomplished something was uh, two days ago. I... Um, I got here, I thought about, you know, trying to keep the mice, trying to keep the mice out of things. So I was hanging things up and I had a bunch of short pieces of rope and I was able to uh, actually use the book that I found uh, to find out some actual knots. Uh, Cause I know how to do simple knots, but I found out how to do some actual knots to, uh, to tie stuff up and to join pieces of rope together. It really feels great to have access to all this food that I didn't have access to before. And I had a chance to try some of it just a little bit ago. And it's making me think that maybe mothballs aren't the best way to protect food from rodents. It did seem to keep out the rodents, but the food tastes a little bit like mothballs. I don't know if taking out the mothballs at this point is gonna do much good, but I certainly know that keeping them in there isn't gonna be doing me any favors. So what I've decided to do is remove the mothballs from the food and come up with a different way of trying to keep mice and rodents out of it. When I used to go camping, I would take my food and I'd put it in a bag and kind of sling a rope over a tree and haul the food up into a tree out on a branch so that bears couldn't get to it. Now, mice are kind of like little bears, so I'm thinking about using an approach sort of similar to that. Uh, specifically because one of the tubs had it quite a bit of rope in it. Now, I'm going to be using that rope and I'm going to be uh, creating slings with it and I'm going to use the slings to hang the tubs from the rafters in here. And to do that, I'm going to be using three different types of knots. The first knot that I'm going to be using is called a sheet bend knot. And the benefit of a sheet bend knot is it's really good at attaching different lengths of rope to each other to make them one contiguous piece. One of the best knots that you can use to tie together two different pieces of rope is the sheet bend knot. And it's especially good if you have two different sized pieces of rope. The way you do that is you take one of the ropes and if one's thicker, this will be the thicker piece, make a U shape like that. You take the smaller piece, pass it through the loop, 
wrap it around both pieces of the uh, the larger rope and then tuck it between itself and the larger piece. Snug that up and you've got a sheep bend knot. Really strong knot for tying together two pieces of rope. Again, especially if they're two different sizes. The next knot that I'm going to be using is called a bowlin knot and I'm going to be using that to attach the pieces of rope to the physical rafters themselves so that I can suspend things from them. To make a bowlin knot, you take your rope and you put it around whatever you want to tie to. In this case, I'm demonstrating this on a nail. And on the side that isn't the short end, you put a loop like this. Then you take your short side, put it through, wrap it around here, go back through the hole, and just like that, you've got a knot that's really good at holding tension in one direction like that. And the last knot that I'm going to be using is called a trucker's hitch. And a trucker's hitch is good for kind of cinching up on ropes and getting them uh, to be tight and hold things at tension. This particular tru trucker's hitch that I'm going to be using is really great because it's really easy to release later on. A trucker's hitch is a great knot that you can use to put tension on a line. I would oftentimes use it when I would go camping. I'd have a, a bowline a knot holding on to like a tent loop and then I'd use a trucker's hitch to attach down to like a tent stake or a tree or something like that. And we're going to use a tree in this case. Now if you were just going to try to tie down to a tree, you could just take the rope around and wrap it around the tree and kind of tie some kind of a knot here. But it's really difficult to get much tension into this. And even if you do get a lot of tension, and once you, once you tie the knot down, oftentimes it'll kind of loosen up as it rotates around the tree and stuff. So a trucker's hitch is a great way of tying down the way we can get a lot of tension. And the great thing about a trucker's hitch is, hitch is that it's really easy to release later on. It's not this nightmare to try to get it unraveled. So how do we start? Well, we don't start by going around the tree or the tent stake or anything like that at all. We start in the middle of the line right over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little loop in the line. I'm just going to take the rope and fold it over itself just like that. So I've got this little loop. Then I'm going to get another loop here and just pass it up through. We're going to pull that and now we have a loop attached to our rope. Next, we're going to go around whatever we're going to tie down to. So I'm going to take the scrap end of the rope here, wrap it around that tree, and we're going to take, take that end that we just wrapped around the tree we're going to put it through the loop we created. All right, pulling that back. And now here's where we can put that tension into the line. You can pull it nice and snug there. And there's an awful lot of tension you can put in there. So next thing we have to do is secure this down. So there are three ropes right here, two for the loop and then one for the rope that heads around the tree. We're going to pinch these three right here on this side of where we're, we're grabbing right there. So we're going to pinch these together kind of hold it all together and what we're going to do is we're going to take a loop in this rope right here and this, the fact that we're doing a loop is the key to what makes it easy to get rid of later on. We take a loop and then we just do a classic knot where we just go over these two lines here over and then through the little hole that's left there. Snug it up and there we go we got a lot of tension in that line and the great thing about this rope, uh, this knot in this rope, is that it's really easy to get rid of. Before I uh, demo how easy it is to release the tension in here, I would say that if you're going to ever make a line like this outside where it could be in wind and vibrating, you may want to take an extra loop and do just an extra knot in here as a little added measure of security uh, to make it so that uh, make sure that this doesn't loosen up on you. But uh, you know, generally speaking, unless there's a lot of like push and pull and everything, you know, you're not going to have to worry about it. Now, I mentioned that they're really easy to release these things. There's this little uh, loose end here, and just like with a, a, a shoelace and a tight shoe, you pull it out, and I'm going to be releasing that backup knot. Backup knot has just been released, and now I'm going to release the other knot, and the whole thing just comes apart that easily. So with the tub suspended from the ceiling, I have high hopes that I'm going to be able to keep the rodents out without poisoning my food so that it tastes like mothballs. Overall, I'm just super psyched. This is a huge windfall and things are feeling really, really great at this point. And I haven't really done anything since. I've just had a headache and my foot's hurting. And it's this. And That's 
one of them. I think that's it. That's actually one of them. That wasn't a person, that wasn't an animal. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.